Hey everybody, this is Ashley with Publish with Ashley, and sorry I'm a minute or two late, um, but I'm live today, and hopefully the internet will keep working. It died literally right before, so I'm on my mobile hotspot. Hopefully this all works. Anyway, so I, hi, I'm Ashley, and uh, I like to talk about, today I'm actually going to talk about advertising and do you need ads to make money? I know ads are always a um, source of interest for people, but we're going to talk about that today, so if you um, you want to learn more about low content books, advertising, and just kind of all that stuff, then please like and subscribe to my channel. I usually talk a lot about, I talk in depth a lot about things and kind of give you more details than I know most YouTubers do. Because when I started out, there was nothing out there. Um, there was very little. And so I didn't know what I was doing and I just had to learn it. So I want to help you guys. Anyway, so let's talk about ads and you guys can ask questions afterwards. Let me share my screen here. Okay, so do you need ads to make money on low content books? And the answer is no, but I'm gonna talk about kind of the different methods and methodologies and you can kind of see why ads can help or why, um, you know, how they can help you or how maybe they don't fit into what you want to do because this is your business and you can run your business however you want, it is your business. All right, so. Okay, so making money is basically sales, right? You need to you need to, to make money, you have to make have sales. Okay, so how to get sales. There's three ways really that you need to go through um, and get sales, right? You need traffic. You need eyeballs to see your product so they know it's there to buy it, right? You, so people can't buy things they do not know exists. So it has to have traffic. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, but I want to definitely show you the other part sales. It's not just about getting traffic. It's about having that compelling cover. They have to see it on their, um, you know, the items that are listed on those pages and decide, gee, I want to click on that. So it has to have a compelling cover. Okay. And compelling, there's that aspect of quality, but quality, compelling, compelling, I like as a better verb because, or descriptor, because it is what is appealing to that target audience? Um, I may, I actually made a book, I'm just finishing it and I hate it. <laughs> like in the sense of it's too much for me, it's too bright, it's too garish, but I'm making it for a specific audience and they love that sort of thing. And that's fine, right? Because I'm making it for them and not for me. Um, now, description that converts to sale, right? You need to have a compelling description um, for the title, subtitle, and descriptions, how to do those. I actually have YouTube videos. Please check those out on my YouTube channel. But I talk about that in um, depth. But do remember that descriptions do convert to a sale. Now, also in your description, your product page is that A plus content you can add because I know some people just don't read. That's okay. That's what the A plus content is for. It's that visual. It's for the people who like visual better, right? So it's that opportunity to do pages, um, you know, some excerpts of your book, the cover, maybe some more information in a more visually appealing method. And that can sell your customer, right? So that description or product page is the way you convert to get a sale. Okay, so all that. Morning to those watching. Okay, now let me get to the next slide real quick. I'm going to try to go through these fast. So you guys can ask questions. Okay, so this we're gonna talk about and focus on traffic, right? How do you get traffic? Because that's that's what ads is. Ads is traffic. Okay, so there's two ways. There's inside traffic and outside traffic. Um, we're gonna go more into depth into inside traffic because that's kind of the ads, keywords, that sort of thing. Outside traffic, I don't wanna dismiss it because I think it is definitely something that you can do, especially if you don't wanna pay for ads. It is a whole nother method of getting traffic, getting eyeballs on your product. There's other marketing, whether that's um, talking to your friends, going out there, going to businesses, whatever. There's other marketing methods, the whole gamut of them. There's social media, including Pinterest, Facebook, um, you know, TikTok, uh, Instagram, all that. That's I'm just kind of lumping that all into social media. There's your blog if you have a blog. There's your, a website if you have a website. There's there's things like that. You could also do I didn't put it on here, but you could do paid promotions. You could talk to YouTubers and um, have your thing advertised. You could talk to Instagram. You know, there's all the paid 
methods of traffic, or maybe you know someone, right? Um, or just doing an exchange of favors. Maybe you um, get on someone's YouTube channel, but you make them something for free, right? So it doesn't have to be paid, um, but there probably needs to be some exchange of value, for something like that. All right, now in traffic. So Amazon push, um, it is a method but it is outside your control. So it's not something I want you to focus on, but I want you to be aware of it because there are some factors to it that you can affect or at least be aware of. Um, keywords, 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 right? <laughs> That's how people type in Amazon and find you, right? They type in what they're looking for. And if your book satisfies those keywords, then hopefully it'll be shown. Amazon ads, right? That is definitely a way to get traffic inside Amazon to pay for ads. Okay, next. Okay, so inside traffic, the Amazon push is kind of two things to think of it as, is there's initial push for your book for the first 30 days. Amazon loves new traffic or new products, new stuff. They like to show it to an audience to see if it'll garner interest and convert to sales, right? So there is the initial push of a book for 30 days. After that 30 days, you just, it, you don't get the push, okay? Um, so that's kind of, everybody gets that. Um, now, in that 30 days, if you start to get sales, Amazon is going to push your book. So this is that second part. If your book starts to sell for a set of keywords, the algorithm might decide to push it. Now, they'll probably decide to push it, but how much they push it depends upon Amazon. But again, something you cannot control. You can control your keywords. You can create you know, a good product, all those sorts of things. But you can't really control any of this other than doing your best. Um, so I want you to worry about it, but I want you to know that it is there, that Amazon can decide to push your book if it starts to sell. And the more it sells, the more it converts, the more Amazon wants to push it. Um, that's how some people do get, you know, really good organic sales because something captures the audience's attention and they start buying. So Amazon starts pushing it. And when Amazon gets sales, you know, they're happy to convert to a sale if someone's going to buy it. Um, you win, they win. It's good for everyone. So, but this is something you can't, you can't control. Hello. Um, let's see. If you were only going, um, it's, now, keywords. The second one was uh, if you get found by the algorithm, this is like keywords, how you get found. Those backend keywords, your title, your subtitle, all that sort of thing. You really only have two things you want to to get your keywords you want to and this is where everyone comes into like uh you know how do they choose their keywords and you know what niches do i go for and all that that's search volume and relevancy so search volume means you have to do your research so that's all those things about how to find keywords and the right words but don't yes you want to work and get keywords that are relevant and keywords that people are purchasing and all that sort of thing. Um, but I don't, other than kind of determining is the product viable um, and finding keywords that I really think are relevant, uh, I don't stress about this probably as much as most people do. Um, but there is something to this because there, if you're going to go organic only, no ads, no real push, you're only going to rely on Amazon for everything, your keywords are your all important thing. And there must be a balance between your research, your quality and your volume. Now, if you're just going organic, your research has to be spot on, you have to be a good researcher. Um, now, initially, I think going organic is definitely the way to go because you have to learn. It's a whole learning process. And you shouldn't spend money on ads until you know what you're doing. So I, I completely agree. Um, start with you know, organic, because you have to learn, there is that learning process, and eventually you do get better. Um, but as you get better, you can start adding ads, because now what that does is it um, changes your volume, because if you're doing keywords and organic only, you have to have a large volume of books, okay, you're, and that comes over time, it's not like if you just put out a 1000 books in a week, a month, six months, that you're suddenly going to a million sales. That's not true, um, but there is something to that volume. If you're going for the low competition keywords, that probably means they have less traffic. Now you might be the only person on that those keywords, so you get sales consistently, but you're not going to probably hit it big, okay? It, it can happen if you hit a trend, 
it can totally happen. But if you're going for those low competition keywords, the traffic just isn't as high. That's that's kind of how it works. <laughs> you can be upset about that or whatever, but that that's how it is. Um, now, that means you have to create books, okay? Because they're going to have less traffic. You're going to make sales, um, but you're going to have to have more books you know, one, two, five, ten a month or something like that, right? They do all add up. Um, and the nice thing about low content um, books is that they don't take a huge, they don't take a really long time to make, okay? So there's that balance of it, right? Okay, hopefully I'm back. I'm coming back. Sorry. Okay, let me fix my slides here. Okay, sorry, I told you my internet is wonky. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, let me make it big. Okay, I'm so sorry. All right, uh, so With ads, you still need a balance. There is still research and quality. You don't have to necessarily do the, as much volume because you can try and um, put some money that you've you've already, you know, if you're making some money, you can put money back into your business by running ads. And so you don't, you get more traffic, more eyes on, which leads to more purchases, okay? Not if you do it smart, right? You always have to do things smart. You can't just throw money and expect it to work. That's not how things are. Um, so you have to, you know, know what you're doing. You have to experiment. You have to try. You have to set some limits and standards for yourself, okay? Um, so I'm going to show you a few things. Um, I'm going to show you, these were notes for me. I was going to show you my ad spend. I have that. And then I'm going to show you a reverse engineering tactic. It's just something you should kind of think of. And then I want to make sure I mentioned that um, I published with Ashley ads course. So it's like publishing bootcamp or something like ads, publishing bootcamp. It's at, it's the one with ads. It's right here. Um, it, there's a coupon for $10 off until February 21st, just past my birthday. Um, so the coupon code is add 10 or there's a link. The link is below in my show notes. So you have that um, just in case you're interested in learning really how to do ads. So overall, the answer is, do you need ads to make money? No, but it does change your business strategy, right? Volume has to be something that you are willing to put in if you are going for all organic sales. You have to be willing to create lots of books, okay? You have to come up with the process. Um, to continually put out books so that you can target those low competition keywords and then get a few sales a month from every book or from the books that start to sell, right? And there's always ones that don't. Uh, so that is something, and it just depends. Now, if you're willing to put in money and... Uh, Um, time to actually run. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so let me answer some questions and then I'm going to show you some stuff too. So let me answer some questions. Sorry about my internet. It, it's just it's been very frustrating. I purchased, oh, so MT says I purchased your course on ads and you said start with ads like $5 a day. Um, and you said in some of your examples, you spent 800 per month. No, I do not spend 800 per month all the time. I'm actually going to show you guys during um, higher months, like December and January, I do occasionally, but I will show you. I'll show you that. Um, so do you increase your budget? Um, and how do you, oh, do I increase my budget more than $5 a day? Yeah, I have some that run at $10 a day. I don't do that until they start to become profitable and where I want them to be. Um, if they are 
If they're not performing how I want them to perform, then no, I don't. Um, and that's kind of, that's, that's what knowing ads are. I try and keep a cost really low. So you need to calculate your break, in, break even a cost. So how much you're going to spend on ads. Um, and if you spent more than that, you wouldn't break even, right? So you need that number for yourself. And then I try and keep it at a certain point. And if it gets above my comfort level or it's not profitable, I shut it down. But if it's, I mean, if I'm at 10% ACOS, yeah, I'll increase something to $10, $15 a day because 10% ACOS means I'm selling and I'm selling very well and very inexpensively for an ad. So yeah, I'm fine with that. Why not? Um, now, if you don't have the money, yes, maybe budget and, and yourself, but um, I'm at this point where I make a pretty consistent income, so I'm okay with that. Um, is it okay to publish planners in 2022? Um, it's a little late, but yes, you can. Most planners get purchased in the December, January, into February. So yes, you can try, but it's kind of hard to break in at this point in time um, to do well. But you can try, you could do, um, now that's not true in the sense of you could do academic planners and um, school planners and teacher planners and all that sort of stuff, because that will start selling in July, August timeframe, maybe even June, because that's the school ends and people are purchasing it for the next school year. So if you're going to do 2022 planners, look into student planners, academic planners, and teacher planners, things that are more in that time frame. Okay. Is a children's book niche too saturated for ads? No, I think you need to target. You need to make sure that you are going for a, something that pulls people towards like something children need to learn. Um, for example, uh, one of the bigger trending thing is open mindset. Um, so I have some children's books that do okay. Um, and I advertise them very cheaply under the category open mindset um, because those uh, that is kind of a keyword, key phrase. Parents are trying to teach their children and to be open, to have an open mindset. And so I have some children's storybooks that or, or, or do that, right? They, they talk about being open to change, being open to adventure, being open to make mistakes and then go on and pass that, um, which is something people want to encourage in their kids. So you have to, if you're going to make a children's book, you have to, I think the best way, if you want to make money, if you just want to make it because it's fun and you love it, go for it. Um, but if you want to make money and target and use ads, you've got to have it for a purpose. Um, whether that's teaching counting to children, whether it's teaching counting to children who love dinosaurs, right? Because that's pretty specific. Um, there are kids who love dinosaurs and they don't want to learn to count, but counting with dinosaurs might be fun for them, right? So a parent's willing to spend money to purchase a book that their children would like because it teaches them how to do something with something they like, right? Um, and that makes it cheaper to advertise because you're advertising to a very specific audience. And that's that's what I do with my ads. That's why my ACOS is low, because I focus on a specific like person avatar. I, I look and say, who wants this book? Why do they want this book? And those are the people I target. And I do automatic ads, but I'm most successful with manual ads. OK, so do you run? At, I do run Etsy shops. Um, I kind of vaguely pay attention to them and they make money every month. Um, not a lot of money, but. I use, I reuse some of my Kindle um, books. I, you have to change them a little bit so that they're better as printables. And I run them on Etsy as a printable. So it's kind of just, I publish a book on Amazon and then I publish the Etsy printable. I just kind of make extra money. So I think of it as like gravy um, instead of like really focusing on Etsy, which I could do. Um, I haven't because <laughs> I've had so much more success on KDP. Now I have put more effort into KDP. So, you know, there's that. Whatever you put effort into is what you're going to make. But I like just putting extra stuff on Etsy and then making sales. And it wasn't a whole lot more work. So I'm okay with that. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, I'm still, let me share my screen. I wanted to do one thing and then I'll answer some more questions. I think this one. Yes. Okay. So I got to go all the way over here. So here's, here's an advertising bootcamp. Um, learn Amazon ad $49, $10 coupon. That's, that's my big advertisement there. There you've been sold to now information. <laughs> okay. So 
This is my lifetime ads campaign. You can see I've spent almost $9,286.55 over since 2016. Okay, so it's been a while that I've spent almost $10,000. Now here is this, the orange line is my cost. And so being high is bad. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's bad. Um, you can see like a thousand a cop. Okay, so this was me learning and it's not so bad. You see, I only spent $32. This was me advertising accidentally a free book. <laughs> yeah, there's free. <laughs> the division doesn't work so good with zero. So, um, yeah, this don't advertise. You can advertise free books. I only spent $32. So it wasn't like that bad. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> your ACOS does not go very well. Um, but you can see it was kind of high as I figured out what I was doing. Um, it, it, yeah, it takes time. This is not something you should do if you don't necessarily have money, or if you have some money, you should kind of think of it as an investment in learning how to do this. Um, and it may or may not pay off in the beginning because it is a learning process. Um, I said my ads course will help, but it's still a learning process. And so you can see how my ACOS stays really, really consistently. I have a few months um, where it's in the 20s, even one that was in the 30s. But um, generally, it's pretty dang low. Oh, there's a month. It was only 6%. That's pretty good. Um, and then you can see I have these spikes. This is around Christmas. Um, you can see I always have kind of spikes around Christmas, December, right? Because a few reasons. One, ads cost more in December. Uh, and also there's more eyeballs. So I don't mind spending more because I end up making more. So it works out. But the, the thing to watch is my ACOS. My ACOS, that is how well my stuff is selling. So my break even a cost, it depends upon the book, but it's somewhere between 28 and 37, 38%, depending on the book. Okay. So anything under 20, anything under 25 is all profitable. Um, but I'm, like I said, I'm conservative, 8%. Okay. I spent $900, but my a cost was 8%. It's pretty good. Um, there I spent in January, it's 6%, $400, but you can see I don't normally spend that much. I spend like the 100, 100, 130, 150, you know, down here, 60, um, 50, right? And then it jack, it kind of goes back up again um, because of Christmas. And then this this one, I have um, January, I have uh, a few things I've been selling that are selling really well in January. And since January typically isn't a great month, but my A cost has been really good. See, 13%. I have been putting money into my ads because they're profitable, right? I'm cool with putting a dollar in if I get $2 out. Um, you know, that that's that's good. <laughs> that's not exactly what that percentage means, but you know what I you know what at. Okay, one more thing I want to show you guys, because I think this it's a different idea trying to say, okay, what book should I create that I can advertise to? And one of the ways um it's kind of similar to the thought of what are people looking for on Amazon um, and has a decent search volume, but low competition. The other way you can kind of look at this and get some ideas is if you go and build a campaign, so you hit create campaign and then you do a sponsored ad and you click on the manual. Um, what you end up with is um, you can scroll down here. Um, I didn't want to do it since my internet was so silly. I just didn't want to, it would work. So um, what you can do is start typing in something like coloring book for kids. Okay. And you'll see, yeah, right down there, you can see things start to pop up. What's really cool about this is this is things that people are, this is Amazon's ads suggesting, telling you exactly what people are typing in right now and searching for. So you can kind of get some ideas of stuff that might be good for you to do. Um, yeah, all these are fine. Before, when I was looking at it, it had something about Disney. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to use the word Disney. OK, you don't want to do anything trademarked. Um, but. So you can see Bible coloring books for kids. OK, that's something people are searching for right now um, and. Um, they're looking for. So this is another way. Yes, you can definitely type into Amazon and find some stuff, but this is actually, this is like some of the best data in the sense it's really giving you what um, people are typing in right 
now okay? and looking for. So I just thought I'd share that with you all. Um, and that's ideas of things that if you want to create a specific book, um, like it's a little late now for Valentine's Day books, Valentine's Day coloring book for kids, right? People are currently typing that in and um, you can look and see what the competition is on these, but this can give you some ideas of things that um, maybe you hadn't thought of. Okay, uh, stop sharing that. Okay, questions, okay, uh, I had a few more. Um, okay, so for someone new to ads, do you hear automatic data or manual. Um, you know what? I actually, when I first, first started, I did automatic because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I don't, well, they had manual, I guess, back then, but it wasn't, it was a much more awkward advertising platform than it is now. Much, much less agile. Um, but as soon as I kind of figured out that I tried a manual ad just because I was like, well, I know exactly who I want this book, right? I, if I know who I'm advertising to, because when I did the automatic ads, it was advertising to a lot of people that weren't in my audience. It was just saying like color books. And I was paying a whole bunch of money for that. When I knew it was coloring books for kids who like dinosaurs. Why pay for coloring books when I know I'm targeting someone who really wanted a coloring book for dinosaurs? So what I kind of found is, yes, I run automatic ads. I run both right away. I run an automatic ad and a manual ad right away because sometimes the automatic ad surprises me um, and it finds things I wouldn't have thought of. Um, and also they, it just tell, it gives me some data, but I kind of already know who I created the book for, because when I create a book, I think, I think of who my audience is before I create it. I don't just pick something. I, I understand my audience. I'm big on that. And so I know what they would be searching for because I've done the research to say the different types of words and the different trends they have and different things like that. Um, and so I tend to create manual ads and those do tend to do better. Now, if I saw, find something in an automatic ad that is doing well, like a keyword or a product or something like that, I will either add it to my manual ad or create another manual ad. If it's product that I see selling really well against, I generally create a product ad and then I'll add other products similar to that or even other ones I think might work as well. Uh, so yeah, that it's, I do both. <laughs> I actually tend to run three ads, an automatic ad, a manual keyword ad, and a manual product ad. Those are the ones I tend to run. Uh, I do shut things off, either keywords or um, I will change the bidding uh, based upon how things are doing to make it profitable. There is a strategy that you can run ads where you lose money to get a, a very low BSR. That is not my strategy. Mine is a lot about fine tuning and spending money, um, spending time more than money to find the right keywords for my right audience at the right price, right? There's, there's always a balance and that takes time and some energy. Um, but I do think it's worth it. And that's where if you're doing ads, you have time because you don't need to create as many volume of books, right? So you're trading in the beginning, creating more volume because you're learning. That's fine. But then as you you know, know what you're doing, um, you can create higher quality books that maybe take a little longer and are focused on a specific audience because you know you can spend some time focusing your ads. So it's how you want to run your business. If you just want to create books and not worry about anything, go for keywords, go for organic. Um, if you want to kind of do that balance between doing some ads and doing some books and things like that, then you know, you're going to have to learn advertising and it should be something you jump into slowly. It should be something that you have some money set aside to do. You can, you know, and do it organically. And once you start making some money, reinvest those profits into your ad budget. Okay. Oh, how much should I spend for the first two to three months running ads as a newbie? Mm, how much risk are you willing to take? I would set a budget aside, um, maybe $20, $50 a month, something like that. It doesn't have to be that much. Um, you know, <laughs> how much would I spend? I, I try and spend as little amount of possible. <laughs> That's totally honest. Honest. Um, I would start learning ads now. 
because ads are cheaper now. And as you get closer to Christmas, they are more expensive, right? So if you're learning ads now, um, you're going to have the they're just going to be cheaper. So that's something. Um, and maybe keep it to, you know, 20 to $50 a month. Um, focus on things that maybe are already selling. That's something. If you have organic sales, start looking at those books first. Um, I have created books specifically because I knew I was going to advertise them to an audience. Like I, I put it, I published the book. And as soon as, it was, as soon as it was live, I did a manual keyword ad because I knew exactly who I was targeting. I knew exactly what keywords they wanted, they were searching for. And, you know, it, it did well. Um, but I don't do that for everything. But I created that book in mind because I knew I was going to advertise it. And I knew who I was going to advertise it to. Um, and, you know, I think I spent on, I don't know, it, it all depends. I'm sure I spent... I've spent like $10 on a book and done really, really well. And that was the whole month I spent 10 bucks on it. Um, so how much really depends upon your risk, but I would start small. I would start with, you know, 10 to $20 a month just to, to get yourself learning. Um, I bid really small, uh, 10 to 15 cents are usually my bids because I'm focused on very, very, very specific keywords. They do get less traffic, but guess what? That's your organic um, smaller keywords that have less competition are going to get less traffic because that's why they have less competition because they have less traffic. Um, but they cost less uh, to advertise. And as long as they continue to make a profit, I don't really care. I let them run. Okay. Is that all helpful? <laughs> um, okay. So that's kind of all I wanted to share with you guys today. Does anyone else have any questions about ads? Um, I, the biggest tip I have for ads is start very small, start with a budget in mind that you don't mind losing because in the beginning, it, it just takes time and don't kill an ad too soon. If you calculate your ACOST, your break-even ACOST, know exactly how much you can spend and still make money, Okay. Um, I have lots of other videos about ads. You can look on them and I, I go through how to calculate break even a cost. Um, but it's, it's just division, like one thing of division. <laughs> it's not too hard. Um, so you just, you need to know that number. Cause I had, I saw someone, they were saying I have, they had a 6% a cost and they're like, I'm really worried. Should I, should I cut my ad? And I was like, why? You're probably making money. Like 6% is super. And I don't know because I didn't know the price of their book. But 6% was re is really low. So unless they were making no profit whatsoever over the on their book, then um, they were making money. Uh, so yeah, if you understand that, it, it kind of lets you beat. Okay, I know I'm making money. I know I'm putting some money in, but I'm making money. So I should let it run. Um, the other thing is be patient and um, that you have to keep trying. Sometimes ads work and sometimes they don't work. Um, and who knows why? Uh, Amazon does, but we don't. So you just have to keep trying and keep trying something new and keep trying something different. And eventually there's one or two things. You can either give up. And I've had ones where I just, I couldn't get them to run as profitably as I wanted. And I just gave up and I was okay with that. Um, or you can keep trying to see what can be profitable for you. Um, so, you know, there's different ways to do it. Sometimes I just, I do give up and that's okay because I didn't want to spend the, I, I decided, should I spend the time or should I not? And I decided I didn't want to spend the time. Uh, so you have to keep trying and you have to keep putting some effort out there, but just start small. Don't put a lot of money in at first, learn what you're doing um, and keep trying new things. Okay. So that's all I got for today. I don't see any more questions. So I am going to go, but let me know if you guys have any que more questions in the comments uh, section for this YouTube ad or YouTube ad, YouTube or uh, Facebook video. And um, I will try and answer them the best I can. All right. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you all next week. I have a cake to bake right now. So I'm off to bake cake. You all have a great day. Okay. Bye.